Yep, what's good, original crew, man? We're back. New balling for us, not for some of y'all. Oh, we got she thought she was alone. Have you ever uh, felt as though you was alone? But, but have you ever thought you was alone but felt as though you wasn't? Women experience that more than men, though. Have I ever thought I was alone but I actually wasn't? No, I said felt felt as though you wasn't. I felt like something was watching me. The subject. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Probably all the time, though. Yeah. Yeah, here come this black motherfucker. People ready? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, all the time. Hey, y'all. Uh, hey, I'll get her so good sometimes, bro. I'll, I'll creep up on her. I'll be like, ah, she be, you be damn her back. Sometimes I just be in my own world. You be standing there just watching. I feel like you are so. No, nah, I be scaring y'all. You, you hit that corner and I'm just right there. <laughs> be people through the crowd. And you be, ah! You, I said, this the way you tighten up. No, nah, the way you tighten up. You, ah! I'd be, like, be like, if it ever was somebody for real, see, you wouldn't know. No, I'd be like, on, I'd be on alert, like when I'm out and about. No, I'm saying if, if anybody ever oh, broke in, in, yeah, and they hit you up, you wouldn't know what the fuck to do. Cause I'm I, like, honey, just don't, don't hurt me. Take what you want. It ain't even necessary. By the time you, it ain't that deep. It ain't that deep. <laughs> what you want? I'll help you take it out. Look at this uh, point. So with that being said, <laughs> before we get into it. Make sure you check out the links in the description box. Down below. You already know where to go if you want to first support. All you have to do is check out down below. Also, if you enjoyed today's visuals. Like it with a thumbs up. But let's go. Let's check it out. Let's see what's about you. Ready? I'm ready. Let's go. This story is why we tell our kids not to talk to strangers. But before we get into today's story, if you're a fan of the strange, dark, and mysterious delivered in story format, and you've come to the right <clears throat> channel because that's all we do, and we upload three, four, even five times every week. So if that's of interest to you, please print out the final picture of Luana the Bloodthirster, but be careful not to look at it completely. Always avert your eyes so you don't get a full shot of this picture. Once it's printed out, fold it up so you can't see it, put it inside of a birthday card, and mail that to the like button. Also, please- The wonder to what? The blood thirster. <laughs> oh, yeah. Who was one of the bloods? You have to know the story. Yeah, I don't get that one. I see it's a lot of folklore stuff, so I don't get it. And they do got a picture of her, so I guess you post, don't post a look at the photo. Want to see? Mm -hmm. nah, it's just somebody. It's just a white girl. Let's go. <laughs> Subscribe to this channel and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of our weekly uploads. All right, let's get into today's story. In 1978, a nine-year-old girl named Kim was walking to the corner store to get some pasta sauce for her mother. On her walk home, a man she had never met before walks up behind her and speeds up to where he's walking in step with her. And he looks at her and introduces himself and says, Hi, I'm Dr. Ramsey. I'm a pediatrician. Do you know what a pediatrician is? And Kim immediately had a bad vibe about this Dr. Ramsey character. There was just something odd about him. The fact that he had approached her so suddenly and was right on top of her. So her reaction was to not answer his questions and instead put her head down and walk even faster because she knows she's almost at her house. She's almost at safety. And if she can just get there, she doesn't have to deal with this strange man. But as she sped up, so too did Dr. Ramsey staying in step with her and he begins peppering her with additional questions and comments. Are your parents looking for a pediatrician for you? Oh. Of course they are. You're a big girl now. How old are you? What's your name? Your hair is so beautiful. Where do you live? When Kim got to be about 10 meters away from her house, she just takes off running and she bolts up her back steps through the kitchen door into her house, slams the door behind her, and for a few seconds, she just stands there, almost anticipating hearing this Dr. Ramsey guy come up the back steps behind her. But he doesn't. And after a couple of minutes, she pokes her head around and looks out the window and he's not there anymore. And she feels completely relieved 
that that weird guy is now gone and she can just forget about it. But it turns out she couldn't just forget about this because Dr. Ramsey was not going away anytime soon. It wasn't long after this first initial interaction with Dr. Ramsey that Kim was home one day and she happened to be looking out her front window to the road and she sees a blue Ford Galaxy drive slowly by their property. And she's looking at the car and she can tell immediately that the person driving it is Dr. Ramsey. But Dr. Ramsey doesn't see her. She's kind of obscured behind curtains on the window and she's watching him and he was looking at their front door and he was waving as if there was someone standing on their front steps. But Kim- Motherfuckers are weird. Like, hello, Just sir. from the beginning, bro. Motherfuckers are really weird and strange and bizarre and they live amongst your community. That's what that makes is it creepy. worse. That yeah, was scared the crap out and of And this is 1978. So just imagine this little quiet. Did he say what? No. State, city? No. Just imagine, you know what I'm saying? Kansas. White suburban picket fence. And this white mom just riding by. Hey, it's Dr. Ramsey. You know what I'm saying? That's what I put in my head. Like, you know, in the movies, the white picket fence. It's just, hi. Mom out there with a little... It's 1978. I don't know. Mm. Or it could be hipsterish, you know, with the wood, like a little wooden owl. But still in a suburban home, you know, a little suburban community. You got this weird ass, you know? Yeah. And he was looking at their front door and he was waving as if there was someone standing on their front steps, but Kim knew there wasn't. And so he bizarrely just drove the rest of the way past their property, waving the whole time and then he drove knew he was off. Watching? Now at this point, Kim has not told her mom or her dad or her siblings about Dr. Ramsey because that first interaction, she kind of chalked it up to maybe her being paranoid and maybe even being a little bit rude that she ran away from this doctor who was just trying to talk to her. But now that she's seen him drive past her house and he's acting strange, her alarm bells are starting to go off. Mm -hmm. But she doesn't tell her parents quite yet. But the next day when Kim was playing outside, a car drove by and she turned to look at it and it was the blue Ford Galaxy. And who was driving? Dr. Ramsey. And he slows down and he waves to her and he smiles at her as he passes by. And she kind of looks at him like, what are you doing? At this point, Kim knows he's acting inappropriately. Whatever his angle is, it just didn't feel right. So she runs inside and she explains to her mom that when she went to the store to get that pasta sauce on her way back, this strange man, Dr. Ramsey approached her. She came back to the house. Now I've seen him twice outside of our property and he's clearly waving at me. There's something wrong with this guy. Kim's mother reacted to this news the way most of us would, which is you're talking about a doctor in this nice neighborhood who's driving down the road saying hi to my kid and he claims he's a pediatrician like that's a child's doctor it makes sense he might be waving to kids that's that's part of his job talking and interacting with kids and so her mother says this can't be a big deal i'm sure he just works in the area and this is part of his commute going down this road and now you've seen him a couple days in a row it's just a coincidence but shortly after this when dr ramsey started calling their house <gasps> kim's mother and father very quickly ditched the He's a doctor so we can trust him routine and became very concerned. A couple of days after Kim had told her mother about Dr. Ramsey, Kim gets called into the living room where her father's sitting and he looks very troubled and he calls her over and has her sit down and he says, you're not in trouble. I just need you to talk me through exactly what happened when Dr. Ramsey approached you. Your mother told me about it and there's been a couple weird things that have happened here and I just gotta hear the story from you. And so Kim goes through the story. She describes how she was leaving the store he just kind of showed up and Kim did not talk to him. She put her head down and basically ran back to the house and that was it. Kim's father reacts to this like he's totally perplexed about something that he's hearing the facts, but they don't make any sense. And he says to Kim, are you sure you didn't say anything to him? And Kim said, no, I was scared. I, I didn't say anything. And Kim's father's like, then how did he know your name? Kim was like, what do you mean? And her father said, well, just the other day, I got a phone call from someone saying they were Dr. Ramsey and they asked to speak with you, Kim, by name. They said, can I speak to Kim? And I thought that was odd because, you know, you're my child. And I said, well, why do you need to speak to my daughter? Why can't you speak to me? I'm her father. You're a doctor, you can speak to me. And they hung up. And then they called back again and they asked for you by name again, as if they hadn't heard me the first time. And so I said again, why do you need to talk to my daughter? You can just talk to me, I'm her parent at which time they hung up again. And so I wanted to hear from you directly if you had given your name to him because the fact that he knew your name on that call seems really odd to me. Kim assured her father that she did not give him her name. And you gotta remember that this is back in 1978. So Dr. Ramsey would not have been able to use the internet. 
to try to find Kim's name, nor would Kim's name have been listed in a telephone book because she was a minor. It would have been her father or her mother that was listed right. in the telephone book. So in order for Dr. Ramsey to have her name, he would need to know someone that would give up her name or do some digging, which is obviously very creepy considering the fact that Kim has never met him before. He's a- Or is he possibly like hiding around the house at times? Hearing conversations, you know what I'm saying? Listen through but the window. The you will hear them. Come down, Kim. You get what I'm saying? If he's sitting outside the house. But still, with the phone no. number, you would have to really dig deep. Like, even in the phone. Like, I guess when you have my address. No, no. On the have, in, the, in the phone book, he's not going to get the name. He'll get their name, but not. Not Right. That's I, not, said, I said, no, I said hanging around the house and hearing the, them her talk. Her name. And hearing them call out her name. Yeah, I said that's creepy. I'm agree with you. I said in the fact that you have my that you call our house, you have our number. Well, you can just get there by uh, address. That's why I said. But I said, well, first you have to dig deep. I said, well, he have the address. I guess yeah. he have to go through. But that's still. Hold on, hold on, hold on. When hold we on. used to look in a. Oh, let's tell him. When we. No, no, <laughs> we that's used what to, I'm trying to I'm say. I'm about to say. Oh, let's tell him my address. No, 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 no. When we no, used no. to look me, in the phone book. Was addresses in phone books? Yes. Was it? You used to, but when you used yeah, to look up, the, yeah. but when you used to look up, you used to look up by people's names, so yeah, you at least yeah. have to have their name, because yeah. that was the easiest way to look up, unless yeah. you go through every name, fi trying to find the address, because yeah. you have that much, yeah. but that's creepy to do that's that. All, that's, that takes too much time. Right. That's Way too much time. That's what I'm saying. I'm trying to, I was trying to think, because yeah, I remember, you have, the, I think you I remember the yellow paint, because we used to get to the joint, it, what, what color was y'all? <laughs> I drove was like yellow as a kid. Yellow, I didn't see one blue, think, blue and yellow. yellow. Yeah, something like that. Call it yellow pages and you flip through it. Because once you had the name first, and I can't remember if I know it was the, the address I in the middle and which then the number. Which one was the yellow page and which one was the white page? The businesses and stuff it was, was yellow was, page, right? Businesses was yellow, Because they, try to, they used to try to teach you, y'all going to have to know them when you get older. I'm like, bro. I think mean, like businesses was one color and then like yeah. personal, you know, like. Personal was, was yeah, another was, color. Yeah, it's just like, yeah, right. But, um. That's so. That's crazy. Cause they, he didn't. He not. He didn't. He didn't know her name when he first ran into her. Right. So, yeah. Unless he is or, a doctor, he can get records from other doctors. Or did he? Cause he probably been watching her. Mm -hmm. I don't know. This because the reason why I'm saying it is because obviously he found out where you live by you running back home. Yeah. That that was the one mistake, but that wasn't but even. A, that's know? why I'm going to say you're not even a mistake by doing that no, as a child. No, just trying to go to safety. That's where yeah. you're safe. You don't feel safe at. But as an adult, you never run back to your home because you now you allow them to know where you, mm -hmm. where you live. Older man, and she's a nine year old girl. So, with that in mind, Kim and her parents are on edge about this Dr. Ramsey character, but they don't have any clear recourse because he didn't do anything that was criminal. Sure. They couldn't go to the police and say he figured out our daughter's name because they would be saying a doctor, a pediatrician no less, knows our child's name and was waving and smiling at her. But shortly after this, Dr. Ramsey's behavior would take a dark turn. He would call Kim's house again just a couple of days after those first two calls. And Kim's father would answer, and right away, Dr. Ramsey says, I need to talk to Kim. And Kim's father goes into protective mode, and he says, do not call this house again, and he hangs up. But eyes. seconds later, the phone is ringing again, and at this point, the family has come in the room, because they heard their father screaming at someone on the phone. The phone's ringing, and their father picks the phone up and puts it back in the receiver, canceling the call. And he looks at his family, and he says, do not answer the phone. The phone rings again. He picks it up and cancels it again. On and on, the phone rang incessantly all night until they disconnected the phone line. The next day, when they plugged the phones back in, Kim's parents told all of the kids, do not answer the phone. No matter what... It's 1978. Do they have... They don't have, like, speakerphone, right? I don't know. No. I don't think so. Not, like, put it on speaker so you can hear... Cause then I was like, just give them the phone, just say hello, hello. give the phone to the mom and be like, hello, to try to kind of fake like that's Kim, yeah, just a feminine voice. No, I'm well, saying to see what the fuck he wants. Well, no, because I'm not even because whatever you like in your head trying like to do, I'm not. I don't even want to feed your little. I'm, I'm, I wouldn't do that. I'm just saying to try to figure out because why the. Cause I, obviously you ain't taking no for it. I don't know. I get what you're saying. I pause a lot, but this got my mind like going. Yeah. When they plugged the phones back in, Kim's parents told all of the kids, 
do not answer the phone. No matter what, don't answer the phone. And once again, the phone starts ringing and Kim's father picks it up. He doesn't say anything. And he hears on the other end of the line, Dr. Ramsey asking for Kim. And he says, do not call this house again. And he slams it thinking that's going to do it. But of course it doesn't. And mm -hmm. over the next several days, anytime the phone was plugged in, it was practically a nonstop call yes. from Dr. Ramsey. And one time when Kim's father did pick up the phone, he reacted to it like it was some horrible thing being told to him. And he put it down, he disconnected the phone and he went into the kitchen. And one of Kim's brothers overhears their father talking to their mother in a hushed tone. And he's saying to her, he just told me he's gonna hurt Kim unless he can speak to her. After this threat was made, things got very complicated. Back in the 1970s, there weren't any stalking laws that would protect mm. Kim and her family from Dr. Ramsey. Mm. Even though Dr. Ramsey had just threatened Kim, there was no proof he had done that and he hadn't done anything physical. And so there wasn't any legal recourse. The police couldn't really do anything. And so Kim's father ends up calling one of his friends who happens to be a police officer he explains the situation and he says, would you mind for the next little bit, just escorting my daughter Kim to and from school because we don't want her to be out walking around True. by herself with this guy rolling around the neighborhood. The friend says yes and he began bringing Kim to and from school and Kim felt a lot safer with her father's friend because you have this police officer that's walking around with you. But it also isolated Kim in a really major True. way. She wasn't really allowed to go outside anymore without an escort, which meant her life was confined largely to being inside almost 24 seven. And there was no clear resolution in sight for how to handle Dr. Ramsey. And so it was like this indefinite period of time that Kim was just not gonna be allowed to have a normal life. Once Dr. Ramsey was completely cut off from any interaction with Kim, I mean, she barely went outside and when she did, she was with this police escort and she never answered the phone. Once that was going on, Dr. Ramsey became desperate. One evening, Kim, her sister, two of her brothers and her mother were in the kitchen chatting when one of her brothers suddenly reacts like he sees something out the back window that leads out to their garage. And he runs over and he's looking out and Kim and her family are turning to him saying, what do you see, what's going on? And he goes, there's someone in the garage. And they all run to the windows and they're looking out and there's a window on the side of their garage. Their garage was detached from their house. And there's a window on the side and there was this man there standing there looking out at them. And once he saw that everybody is looking at him, he ducked his head down. And as Kim's family is looking at each other like, did we really just see someone in the window? Because it's kind of dark and they're not there anymore. Suddenly the garage door slowly rises up and out pops a man who stands up, looks at them just long enough that Kim yells, that's Dr. Ramsey, I saw him, that's Dr. Ramsey. Mm. And then the guy takes off down the driveway away from their house and Kim's two brothers immediately run out the house and chase him down the road. But eventually he darts into another property and he disappears and they can't find him. Kim's mother calls the police, they show up, they take down some statements. And they basically say, look, if he comes back, let us know. But for now, just go back in your house and lock the doors and keep an eye out. For two weeks after the garage incident, they didn't hear from Dr. Ramsey and they didn't see Dr. Ramsey. And it was this great reprieve from this very stressful time in their lives. But after those two weeks, Kim's father walked outside onto their front porch and he saw their beloved German Shepherd was dead lying off the side of the porch. Wow. And he goes over to the dog and it looks like it's been roughed up, but it's hard to tell what actually happened to it. Now, at first, the family is absolutely devastated about the loss of their beloved animal, but- That cancels out my theory earlier. With the with the po possibility was he listening to the house like trying to hear oh. that because then obviously the dog is there right so the right. dog is there protecting they would have been hurt so that counts as out there yeah obviously he was trying to do some as far as with the house and obviously the dog got it you know yeah or he like or whatever he has planned he knows he that he can't do it with the yeah. dog so, so he yeah. has to get the that is what. Now, at first, the family is absolutely devastated about the loss of their beloved animal. But shortly after that, they start thinking, do you think Dr. Ramsey could have had something to do with the death of our dog? And so Kim's father calls the police and says, I think our stalker, Dr. Ramsey, killed our dog. But the police would say there was no okay. evidence to suggest anybody killed your dog. It could have just been an accident. Also, we haven't even been able to identify who this Dr. Ramsey person is because there are no Dr. Ramseys in this town. And so probably he's using a fake name. So the family's sad and frustrated, Damn. but once again, has nothing they can do about this. That night, Kim and her family are sitting at home. They're all very sad about the loss of their dog and the phone rings. Now, prior to this, there had been two weeks where Dr. Ramsey hadn't called once. Mm -hmm. And so Kim's father picks the phone up and says, hello. 
and it's Dr. Ramsey. But unlike all the other calls where Dr. Ramsey almost always began with put Kim on the phone, this time he started with, there are seven people in your house right now. Your wife's in the kitchen, you're in the living room, your three sons are watching TV in the den, and your two daughters are upstairs in their respective bedrooms. Kim's father sure. is obviously horrified to hear this because it was all accurate. And he just screams into the phone, stay away from my family, and he hangs up. After this phone call, Kim's father was naturally very shaken up by this because even though they knew Dr. Ramsey was probably living in the area and he clearly drove past the property and was local, it just felt way more intimate for him to be naming things that meant he had to have been near their house Too recently close. and looking in windows. And so Kim's father runs around the house and makes sure all windows are shut and locked, blinds drawn, all the doors are locked. And then he goes all around the house to make sure all his kids and his wife and everybody's okay. And then afterwards he considered calling the police, but felt like it was kind of futile because to this point they haven't Something been able else. to help them and nothing has changed. It was just another creepy phone call. And so they don't do anything. The next day they plugged their phone line back in because they need to use a phone. And shortly thereafter, the daily calls with Dr. Ramsey began again. And now every call, whenever they did pick up, started with Dr. Ramsey identifying who was in the house and where they were. After a That sounds like he's in a fucking house or living somewhere in the house. And that's when I was like, can he call within the home within the home? Can you call a landline? I ain't had a fucking landline. <laughs> no. I don't, bro. We, hey, I ain't gonna lie. Every household should have a landline, though. I, I will say that. But the way they have it programmed now, it's so, it's so. Cause, well, I said the last time I was working from home, and I had to run a landline through the internet service, and I ain't really like that. But you don't have to do that. For for who we have, yeah, you do. I'm mm -hmm. saying we we do, but I'm saying you don't everybody, have to. Everybody don't have to do that. But I'm just saying. For the service we had, or we have, have. You, you have to. Mm. It has to run through the internet line. I don't like that, though. Yeah. Because everybody, all of it is not offered in our area, which is... True, true. So... The days of this the family was just living in paranoia it was this horrible time in their lives and one night the phone rings and kim's father picks it up ready to just scream at this guy and take out his frustrations and dr ramsey instead of giving the report starts by saying i can open your kitchen window and i can open your french doors to the side of your house huh? kim's father is about to yell at him but instead just hangs the phone up and runs into the kitchen and he checks the window and he knows it's faulty and clearly so does dr ramsey right. and so he gets a piece of twine and he ties it over the latch and gets it as tight as he can. And then he ran over to the French doors, which were faulty. You'd have to push pretty hard, but you could, in theory, pop the doors open if you knew these were faulty doors. And so Kim's father is not taking house. any chances and he gets some nails out of the junk drawer and he nails a row of nails into the ground, right into the hardwood, sitting immediately outside the frame of the door. So if you were to push on them, you would just butt up against the heads of these nails and it would keep it shut. It was his temporary solution until he ordered a proper lock to fit on the door. At this point, it was safe to say Kim and her family were living in fear that Dr. Ramsey at any given point could just break into their house because clearly he was canvassing their house and testing different entry points and he had already found two. And so now they just felt totally unsafe in their house. But oddly enough, after that last call where Dr. Ramsey had said he knew the kitchen and the doors were faulty, the calls from Dr. Ramsey decreased to almost zero and they didn't see him anywhere. And it started to feel like maybe he had gotten his thrills and he was moving on now. And it just so happened that around the time the family is starting to think this could be over, the mother and father had to go to this company function where oh, the kids that. couldn't go. So oh, the kids okay. would be alone, but the kids said, you know, we're fine with it. We have each other. The house will be locked. We won't go anywhere. No. And the parents, even though they hated the idea of their kids being alone at all because of everything going on with Dr. Ramsey, they felt like, you know what, it does seem like he's kind of moved on and we're only going to be gone for a couple of hours. So I'm sure this is going to be fine. So that night after her parents leave, Kim is sitting on the couch. She's watching TV. Her younger brother is laying on the ground right in front of her and her sister is sitting on the other end of the couch and she's on the phone. And Kim said she found herself looking out of her room into the kitchen towards the side of the house where those French doors were that led out into the side yard. And those doors were still only secured by the nails her father had put into the ground. 
the lock her father had ordered had not come in yet. Kim found herself looking at these doors, feeling really uneasy about it. And then as she was looking at it, she could have sworn she saw the doors begin to push open. And she's looking at it even more closely. And then for sure, she sees the doors bow inward, like someone is pushing on the top and the nails are stopping the bottom. And, and for a split second, she sees the clear silhouette of Dr. Ramsey. And she screams, it wakes up her sister and her brother, and she's pointing at the double doors. They all look, and once again, he pushes on those doors, exposing himself just for a second to the kids. So now all three kids have now seen this guy trying to force his way into their house. Oh, and so they scream and run right upstairs, they go into Kim's room, they shut the door, lock it, turn the lights off, and they go over to the window that's looking out to the front of their house. Now, Dr. Ramsey is on the side of the house, so they wouldn't be able to see him through this window, but they're just praying that he does not break through those doors and come in the house. They're hoping they'll see him as he exits the front of their house. And they're kind of keeping an eye out the window, just praying they see this guy leave their property and leave them alone, but they don't see him leave, and they don't hear any noise downstairs or outside. It's just total silence. And they're wondering, did he already get in the house they decide they need to look for themselves and so they leave Kim's room and they sneak down the hall to the side room which was their brother's room that overlooked the area where Dr. Ramsey would be they go over to the window and they poke their heads up and look out the window downstairs and sure enough there's a man standing right in front of those French doors with his hands on them kind of looking in looking around and at this point, the kids suck themselves down underneath the window so that he doesn't see them. And as they're crouched down, they hear him start banging on the door downstairs, at which point Kim's sister, who was there with her, just says, what do you want? The banging stops and the man says, I have a pizza. Come down and get it. Kim and her siblings didn't order a pizza. So what the weird fuck is... Bro, like, who is this person? And where did he come weird, from? Weird, bro. Right? <laughs> hey, you know how many weird people are? That is such... Bro, this is sad, man. And the man says, I have a pizza. Come down and get it. Kim and her siblings didn't order a pizza. So they just yell out, if you don't leave, we're going to call the cops. And then Kim pokes her head over the window and she looks down and Keep she can up. clearly see it's Dr. Ramsey who's now turned and he's running away from their house. Just a couple of minutes later, Kim's two older brothers return. They were out at a skating rink and they come back, they come inside and Kim and her two younger siblings go up and tell them what happened. And immediately those two run out and start looking for him, but he's yeah, long gone by gone now. now. So they come back in, they shut all the doors, they lock everything, they shut the blinds. And they say, okay, all we can do is just get a knife out of the kitchen, each of us, and just be armed until our parents come back. And so they all grab a knife, except for the youngest brother, and they all retreated to their rooms and basically just waited for their parents to come home. An hour later, Kim's parents are still gone and all the kids are still in their rooms and her younger brother gets hungry and he decides to go down to the kitchen to get a bowl of cereal. So he goes downstairs and he's getting his cereal together and he starts feeling like someone is watching him and he's looking around and he knows all the curtains have been drawn and everything's locked and shut and he's just psyching himself out, but he notices the French doors that are leading to the side of the house, those have glass panes on them and there's nothing covering them. And so as he's getting his cereal together, he finds himself constantly looking over at this door and finally he decides, okay, I'm gonna put my cereal down and just go look out the glass, just make sure no one's there. And so he walks a little bit closer to these doors and he gets about, you know, five, six feet away and the glare from the lights above still make it impossible to look out this glass. And so he's kind of squinting his eyes, but he can't see anything. And so he steps forward and he puts his hands like this and he looks right out one of the panes of glass and staring back at him is Dr. Ramsey, who'd probably been there the whole time. And he's just standing there looking at him and he freaks out, he screams for his brothers. And as soon as he turns back around, Dr. Ramsey has run away, he's gone. All of the siblings come pouring downstairs, knives in hand, and they're asking what's going on. And the youngest brother is trying to explain that he just saw Dr. Ramsey right on the other side of this door. And the older brothers go running outside. They're screaming for this guy. They're looking for him, but he's gone. And they all come back in the house and they don't know what to do. And so they all stay up together in the kitchen with their knives, with everything shut and locked, just waiting for their parents to come back. And shortly after they hear their parents using their keys to come in the house, they come in and the kids explain what happened to their parents and the parents feel horrible. And they're like, I'm so sorry that we left. We should never have left you guys. But as horrible as this was for the family, when they call the police, they can't really do anything because he wasn't there now. Nobody got hurt, nothing was taken. And they don't even know what this guy's name is. And so they just said, stay inside, keep everything locked and let us know if he comes back. That's A sense. couple of horrible weeks for this family goes by where they're living in constant fear. The parents are never away from their kids. The father had to take time 
time off from work. It's just this very stressful time where they are totally prisoners in their own home. Yeah. And after about two weeks of this, Kim is at school. She's at recess with her class outside. And she was playing on the playground when she looks out at the road and she sees Dr. Ramsey in his car parked, waving at her and yelling her name. Wow. And so Kim is horrified. She turns and runs to her teacher and she points at him and she says, that guy's stalking our family. I have to go inside and tell my parents. They immediately took this very seriously. They took Kim inside to the principal's office and they called home to Kim's mom. And when she picks up, Kim's mom explains that she just got a call from the school office asking her to verify whether her husband was gonna be picking up Kim from school early. And Kim's mom said, no, he's not picking her up. What? There's no one picking her up early. And that's when they put it together that Dr. Ramsey must have been in touch with the wow. school to try to convince them that he was Kim's father and he was here to pick her up. And that's why he was parked outside. Kim's mother is horrified because she's thinking to herself, if the school hadn't been diligent to confirm this, there's wow. a chance they would have given her child to Dr. Ramsey. This proved to be kind of like the final straw, even though there was a whole bunch of final straws along the way. This was the one that ultimately pushed Kim's father over the edge. That night, Kim was sleeping in bed when she woke up because she was thirsty and she goes downstairs to the kitchen and she's surprised to find her father is sitting at the kitchen table, the lights are off, and he's got a gun in front of him and he looks totally disheveled and upset. And she knows right away that this is because of Dr. Ramsey. She's not thinking this is anything else. Yeah. And so she walks over to the sink and just kind of ignores the fact that this is happening. She gets a sip of water and then she sits down with her father and says, is everything okay? And her father looks up and he just says, no, I'm not okay. I'm tired of leaving the house and wondering if when I come home, my family's not gonna be there anymore. I'm tired of not being able to protect my own kids. I'm tired of this, this has to end. Kim didn't know what to say, so she just sat there in silence with her father until he told her to go back to bed. Kim says after this night, they never heard from Dr. Ramsey again. It was like he vanished off the face of the earth. No more phone calls, no more drive-bys, no more anything. He was just gone. And while we don't know for sure what happened to Dr. Ramsey, I think it's safe to assume that Kim's father had something to do with it. So that's going to do it, guys. I hope you enjoyed today's story. Hell no! If you found the secret in today's video, let us know in the comments what... Secret? I'm pissed off. What? We ain't finna end this That's it? Like that's this. all? That's all I get? We just gonna end it. So what you think... Uh, the dad and killed killed Doctor Ramsey, cause he's sitting there with the. Come on. Oh, bro. Something else had to happen, bro. Something. Oh no, man. Oh no. Maybe he got arrested for something else. I mean, cause they we never knew his real name. You know what I'm saying? No, no, I don't know. I'm just trying to. But come shout up out to something. school though, for real, for being yeah, being vigilant, doing vigilant. that. Di huh? Uh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, shout out to them for being vigilant, being having their antennas on to re realize something is not right with this whole situation. Yeah. And reaching out to the parent just to be able, like, it's, like to confirm. Cause who who knows if the dad would really be going to the school like that for a, t a parent to be like that's not her dad, you right? Know? I mean, well, for I mean, a well, teacher, but she would she would definitely know and she would be able to you know and that's the good thing that she the, that's I, the good thing that she's of age and it's not like why the fuck the teachers don't if he out here sitting and stalking the kids. What the fuck is the teachers doing? Uh, they ain't paying the fucking attention. Cause he across the street. If she. Uh, Bro, be it, I'm gonna tell you when when I used to work with the kids and the youth, when we were outside watching them, we were also watching our surroundings. Okay, so if you see somebody across the street, what are you going to do? Also screaming out her name, Kim. I'm gonna go and alert. We're gonna. Well, see, he, he didn't say that. Yes, he did. He said she was, I he thought was across she, the street, I thought she was waving and screaming her name. <laughs> I can't stop counting like he was. Uh, he was. I thought she said that she seen him, man. She, and he was across the street waving and, and screaming went her and name. Told her to, okay. I, my, With it, that it, being said, no, of, that's different. But I guess I missed that part. A lot of teachers when they when they take them to recess, this they break time. They're not paying attention. Damn. Cause we we literally I ain't even on the phone. We just out there like this. 
watching. I, I used to walk, go check, see if anything coming. You know what I'm saying? Checking, yeah. checking corners, making kids stay, and visual. Uh, er, like you gotta be alert, bro. Facts, you do most definitely. But this is I not hate where he go ended, bro. Right. That's Something has to happen because he not he didn't just stop all of a sudden. And I'm talking about the dad, man, he ain't scared of the dad. He been bluffing with the dad. He killed the dog. Unless dad caught him and literally shot him down and buried him in the backyard. That ain't the only reason why he stopped. It's something else. Yeah, or or he found else. him another victim. Nah, they, he was too obsessed. Nah. Yeah, Mr. I, Dr. Ramsey might still be around with lurking in the distance. And what's so look for yeah, and what's so crazy is that no one ever really knew his real name. If or, that if that was his real name, or what he actually really really looked like. Nobody ever had like a good clear image, a look to who he other is, other than Kim. Other than Kim, yeah. And that's the other scary part, man. Y'all spend what's up in the comments, man. Please Let us do. know y'all thoughts about this in the comment section down below. I don't even know what to say after this. I'm like, I hate the cliffhangers shit like that, bro. Yeah. Like, let me find out the end result for real, for real. And that, even though that was the end result, but they don't feel like the end result to it. Has to be more, yeah. you feel like, yeah. Yeah, man. But as always, man, y'all know how. Oh, you got anything you want to add? Mm-mm. What is there for me to add? I don't know. I ain't people, getting nothing. people always be saying, I need to let you that, let you talk. No, th it'll be different if it was something else. <laughs> if the ending was different, then maybe so. Yeah. Ain't, ain't nothing for me to add. Where he at? <laughs> we don't know what happened. No one. Alright, but it's always I had to go for the name DJ Nikki. This is Sierra the Pope. We are. We are. Had to go and get it. Ain't no time to kick it. Got a stack to flip for my foes. Dollar, 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 dollar. Please tell me you can hear me. Don't turn your back and don't declare me. Just let me know if you need me. Dollar, 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 dollar. Let me watch out for my partners. Keep my money long. Get my team strong. Let me run away from my pride.